Um, yeah, yeah, just one. Yeah, all good, Dave. Yeah, yeah. it's recording. We can hear you. Yeah, like loud and clear, mate. Excellent. Yeah. Recording is on now, and it's going to record until we close the chat. Oh. Okay, no problem. Right, welcome to all that are in. Thanks for joining us. I um, just want to cover a couple of things. As you probably just heard, it is being recorded, and it will be posted to the public, um, probably almost certainly via Indiglo on youtube um so sorry just let you know sorry to stop you kevin sorry to stop you should you have the video on what do you mean shouldn't you have the camera on when you are doing this well my camera is on no there's no picture. there you go now, yes perfect Shoot. here i am <laughs> right good evening um as you probably just heard it is being recorded it will be posting to public via uh dave's indiglo on youtube um i warn you there may be some strong language i don't often swear but <clears throat> but uh yes we may go down that road um what i'd like to do is just give you all uh for those that don't know a little bit of background as to how we got to where we are and how things have evolved. So, uh, myself and Graham, who's another, who's a member of um, SPLs, um, ourselves are subject to um, the assessment process um, because we're both unable to work and uh, we started digging in to uh you know the regulations the legislation etc and um initially we had a uh letter of conditional acceptance when they asked you for uh you know assessment and uh it asked plenty of questions which i'll i'll cover an awful lot of it tonight um since those days, which a lot of the time was a lot of paperwork involved um, because we were at that time, we were supplying paperwork to other people. But it's since evolved into it's just a phone call now. That's all you need is a phone call to uh, um, sort out your woes, sort out your assessment nonsense. So it's come quite a long way. Um, we're still running at a hundred percent success rate. Um, the truth is, back in the early days, there was two or three people that we gave the paperwork to, and I don't even know if they ever sent it or used it. Um, one of them did say, "Oh, I haven't had any result from it." So I asked him to show me what he'd put on the form and never did. So there's only three people that would never divulge what they had or hadn't done correctly. So anyway, as I say, it's now um, literally just a phone call from uh, the assessments. And I'll, I'll, I'll cover how that goes. Shortly, I'm going to cover uh, deductions and our sort of current thinking on how to deal with that. Um, I'm going to cover WCA. I'm going to cover PIP assessments. That is the area we most get involved in. It's not the only area we're involved in, but that's the majority of um our dealings with people is because they've been sanctioned or, you know, they're up for an assessment, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so that's sort of a very brief background. In fact, what happened was when uh, we had a sovereigns meeting in uh, Oxford in two, July 2018, I believe, we had, um, we'd, Graham and I threw ourselves under the bus 
we didn't come along and go, oh, we've got an idea. Do you want to try it? We threw ourselves under the bus first. Um, and we, so, so we, we walked the walk with our own process. They didn't like it. And uh, at that time, you know, um, they would sanction and obviously force you to go to tribunal via mandatory reconsideration. Um, but we were, you know, Graham's been successful. I've been successful twice uh, at tribunal, absolutely walked it. Um, so we, when we were at Oxford at the meeting, with another member of the group who was really being treated quite badly. Now, at this time, we weren't, we were interested in what SOVs were doing. But we had gone down a slightly different road for legislation. So we didn't throw ourselves at um, the sovereign way, shall we say, initially. But um, what happened was we then combined um, a lot of the stuff we've learned about the trust situation. And the first person we used that paperwork on, um, the result was in very short time, was, here's your money. You're not going to be subject to any assessments ever again. So that was our first, apart from ourselves, that was our first real success. So uh, that's, that's how we came to be where we are. And obviously it's evolved. And now it's literally, you can do it all in phone calls, all of it. So uh, it's it's come a long way, but it's got sim very very much more simple. As uh, long as you've um, got some cojones, you stand your ground, you will prevail. Say so everybody, everybody that's listened to us has used the process, has had results. Um, you know, from they don't think their awards correct which we can get corrected, um, you know, that that type of, of thing. We've all, so we've, we've come a long way. And the whole idea has always been for us to teach people, give people info, so they don't have to rely on anybody, so they can do it themselves. And that's what this has always, always been about, is giving you the tools and the knowledge to deal with it yourselves, um, because generally, especially with people like the DWP, you need to be on it. You know, you, you don't want to be waiting around. You action straight away. If something comes up, get on it. Start, you know, attacking them for want of a better term. But um, anyway, this is, uh, I've got a lot to get through. Um, it will probably be a bit disjointed here and there, and I apologise for that because I've written stuff down as it came into my head, and my head isn't hasn't got a great filing system. But there you go; it's all good. So, um, firstly, I'd like to give you what I would consider um, the mother of all bombs. And this is absolute fact. Um, as admins in here, I don't know who else might be in the group uh, that can confirm this. But um, here's the reality. This is a fact. This has been confirmed to us from the DWP. And that is, are you ready? Assessments are not mandatory absolute fact yeah. not mandatory now if you speak to the agents i.e atos capita maximus and you ask them if they're mandatory they'll tell you they are now my inkling is here that somewhere along the line there's some sort of um should we say bonus system for getting you off. So that's why they'll tell you it is mandatory. 
if you've owned the DWP, you might have to push them a little bit. They'll tell you they are not mandatory. And there's several members have taken our advice, done exactly that, and had it confirmed by the DWP that assessments are not mandatory. And the reason they're not mandatory is because the people assessing you aren't qualified to override your medical certificates, your professional medical opinions, the fact, your medical data. So they cannot, that's why they cannot make it mandatory. They'll lie to you, but it's not mandatory. None of it's mandatory. So that sort of um, one of the roads you can use. But of course, a lot of people are confused. They think the people they're talking to are a government. They're not. At best, they're, uh, um, I'm just trying to think of the term, executive agency. Thank you to Graham. Um, so, but they, they are, in fact, a registered private for-profit company. So you're being deceived from the off. None of the people that are assessing you are um, qualified to, unless you consent. But by consenting, obviously, you're, you're agreeing to go along with the process and they won't do you any favours. That's for sure. Unless, you know, you're 100% solid with it all. You're not going to, they're not going to do you any favours. They will trip you up. So this is why we say to people, rather than going through the process of assessment, getting knocked back or not getting the correct award, then having to do a mandatory reconsideration, which is meant to take 15 working days. I'll tell you now, uh, one of my last ones, they delay that for eight months, okay? <laughs> Even though I was on to them every week. So... That's one thing we can't control is uh, how much of the bastards they're going to be. We've got no control over that, but we do have the answers. So mandatory reconsideration. Um, obviously, until you get a mandatory reconsideration, you can't move on to tribunal. You could go through the back door and pay for a tribunal yourself via HMCTS. But um, don't really advise going that way. So this is why we say to people, fight them from the off, because then you're, you haven't got the added, I've done the assessment, they've given me the knockback, now I've got to do a mandatory reconsideration. You could be three, four, five, six months down the line before you get the mandatory reconsideration. Whereas if you fight them from the off and they sanction you, stop your money, whatever, straight in with an MR so you can shorten that time up considerably. Um, we've got people in here who've stood their ground, um, not had any assessment at all, just no, not doing an assessment, well, not refusing, never refuse, but just standing their ground asking um, questions, and they've got through. They've tried to screw them up and they've done some dirty tricks, but they got caught out. So it really is up to the individual. But I'll give you some. Uh, I'll give you some of the guidance in their legislation. So for work capability assessment. If you go and have a look at the um, legislation on the WCA assessments, I'm going to um, layman's language this a bit, but it basically says we would like the client, the customer, <laughs> I think they call you customers, to do an assessment. 
at least, you know, one, maybe the first one. But, this is their words, it is preferable and less stressful for the client to be given a paper-based review. Okay? That's what it says in the legislation. It clearly says it's better for the client if we give them a paper-based review. That's WCA. In, in PIP, you've got what's called the Gray's Report. I think, don't quote on this, I think it was about 2017. And they've done their best to avoid letting you know about it. But in PIP, it is your right to have a paper-based review. And what that means is they have to use your medical evidence in order to make a decision. Okay? But there's some, well, there's some uh, hurdles with that. Not, not for us, but for them. Because then you've got to ask, who's looking at my medical data? What are their qualifications to look at my medical data? Now, it's my belief that the agents at us, uh, Maximus and Capita, don't get your medical details. The DWP do, okay? But it's exactly the same thing. Who at the DWP is qualified. I want to know their qualifications to look, to even look at my medical data, private, personal and sensitive medical data. Because they're all idiots. They're all idiots. None of them are doctors or anything like that, which, as you probably know, or I hope you're aware of, at one point, consultants did the medical certificate. OK. And then they moved it away from consultants and gave it to the GPs. And now what they're going to try and do is then move that in-house. That's the, the Sunak's latest pointless idea, and we already blow him out of the water. But it's, again, so... How are they going to afford to pay? Well, they have to pay GPs. That's the way I see it, at a minimum. Well, no GP worth their salt is going to go and work for half money at the DWP. So they're not going to use GPs. So, again, who's making this decision? So if they put it into that category where they're going, well, the only place you can get a certificate is through this system. And you, I mean, you, it's, it's really quite simple. Okay. Hello, DWP. Can these people that are assessing me, can they override my, you know, professional medical certificate? And the answer is going to be no. So then it's therefore, well, thank you very much for the offer. But I don't think it would be very clever of me to, to hand my health care over to such individuals. Is it a requirement I do that? And if it is a requirement, then I need to see the assessor's liability. I need to see their, their indemnity insurance in case they cause me harm, loss and injury. I'm more than happy to be assessed. But it has to be at the same level or above of those that have previously assessed me. So, like me, I'm under about five or six different consultants. So, they have to get one in each that's got to be at the same level or above. They can't be below. Can't be below who's previously assessed you. And don't forget, your GP is only issuing a medical certificate um, on the on the information he's got from consultants and doctors that's where he you know that's all he's there for 
So this whole thing of, oh, we're going to take it all out house, don't even worry about it. It's a joke. Absolute joke, these people are. So, um, as I say, you've got the, I've given you, like, the WCA, it says it is preferable to give the client. Okay? So it's less stressful for the client. <laughs> That's all you need. That's what it says in their legislation. Same with PIP and the Gray's report. You, it is your right to have a paper-based review. Absolute right. So go for it. Sorry, you just give me a sec, one sec. I've just got to uh, let the cat in. <laughs> oh, sorry about that, people. Ah. That should leave me quiet for a while. Right, let's come back here. Go in there. Here we go. Right. Um, the other thing to remember is it's not... If you do go through an assessment, now, that is a personal choice. If you want to go through the assessment, by all means, go for it. Um, if they... If the decisions, if you're not happy with the decision, we can challenge that. That's not a problem. Um, and if you get, ultimately, if you get the, once, if you have to have it corrected and we get it corrected, brilliant. Now, from then on, whenever they come to you and say, oh, right, it's nearly time for your assessment again. You go paper-based review. Thank you very much. Now, what this does is, if they've already made the correct decision, um, even if you've had to add it, have it corrected, now you're in a... They have to... They can't use anything else. And they can't downgrade the decision they've already made. So you've made the decision, I want a paper-based review this time. That's what you'll get, and you'll get a decision, but they can't remove it unless they get any other medical evidence to say, well, actually, that's gone now, and that's not true. And mm -hmm. But that's not going to happen. Put on the, the other thing again. is... Sorry? Put on the video again, sorry. Okay. Um, yeah, so you force them. So it's, it's an individual choice whether you want to take part in an assessment or whether you don't. But you, the fact of the matter is, one, they're not mandatory. And, and two, you can call for a paper-based review from the very off, as I say, which then forces them to use your medical data. Um, but not the, if that's going to be the people at the DWP. Now, I know for a fact that they do get your medical records. They shouldn't get them, and your doctor should be going, well, who's... Your doctor just generally will just send it to them, okay? The doctor should be saying to them, what the hell? Uh, who are you? Who's looking at this? But they don't. I've had a row with my doctor um, in the past when he came out and I was going, well, when's, you know, when's the last time you sent data and so-and-so and so-and-so? Because I'd put a letter in to say, don't send anything without my express written consent. So I'm in the middle of the surgery with him. And he said, well, I've got a contract with them. So I said, oh, that's interesting. Can I see it? And he said, no. And I said, well, I must have been named in it for that contract to apply to me. I said, you've not disclosed you've got a contract with the DWP. I said, and by the way, they're, they're not a government agency. You know, they're a private company. So um, then I asked him, I said, you, you do understand contract law, don't you? Yeah, it, that didn't go down well, but I did laugh. Anyway, um, 
yeah, this is there's so much you can do, okay? But here's the point if you do an assessment, it's not the it's not offensive because compared to medical qualifications, they are idiots. They don't like being called it, but that's why I call them it. Because they're twats. Again, can they override my medical certificate? You know, who is looking at this private personal sensitive data? Surely they should be at least GP level. And here's the other thing. A GP, even if they had GPs in there doing this stuff, it, do you know the chances of one GP overriding another? It's virtually nil. Absolutely won't do it. This is why they can't phone up your doctor and say, can you give us some information? One, your doctor's too busy. But two, he shouldn't be giving anything like that out or speaking to them and giving them any info because they're not qualified to have it. Data protection. GDPR. So there's plenty of avenues you can you can take. As I say, you just question question them. Oh, smash the place up. Just ask questions. Never refuse. And they're absolute nobodies that are making this decision on your health. As I say, it's not them that are pressing the button. But they are the ones making a determination and sending it to the DWP who are then acting on it. So if you start all this sort of stuff right at the beginning when they ask you for these assessments and that, and just you know, say, ask a few questions. Who are they? What's their medical qualifications? Are they insured? And the answer is going to be no, no, no. But the best one is they're not mandatory. That should be the biggest bombshell to all anybody in here who's not heard it before. Absolutely not mandatory. Because the people aren't qualified, that's why it can't be mandatory. Now, if they had their own in-house doctors, which they did have some... How old am I now? Bloody hell. Um, 30 years ago, different. I remember going to the DWP in Kingston-upon-Thames and seeing... Two doctors, actual doctors, but they don't do that anymore because they can't afford it. So just ask questions with these people. Don't give them an inch. You know, look at the uh, all the forms you fill out, whether it be for ESA, whether it be for PIP. Fill it out as best you can photocopy everything absolutely everything photocopy so you've got a hard copy of what you sent back to them if you've done it on the computer screenshot it but you know they're trying to force us all over into um on the computer stuff but you are still entitled to have the paperwork so they go oh we don't do it like that anymore no i need a hard copy and they can't deny you it so but that, that's what's going on with these um, people. A lot of the time as well, um, if you've had uh, cause to phone them up and, and have a bit of a whinge up or, or ask them, you know, tell them they've got something wrong and made the wrong decision, they will quite often say to you, right, we've got all the information. We're going to send this to a decision maker. Let me tell you now, the decision maker is the person you're talking to. Fact. Doesn't go anywhere else. They are the decision maker. So don't take any of that nonsense from them. Uh, as I say, is it a requirement that I have my professional medical health care over to unqualified agents? Of course it isn't. Nobody can force you to do that. And then you add, and by the way, they're not mandatory on the end, and that's that. So if they're not mandatory, and that's been confirmed by the DWP, they shouldn't be able to do anything to you.
at all. Two are not mandatory, are they? Uh, well, no, they're not. Well, OK, thanks for the offer. But no thanks. Be more than happy if you bring in the rightly qualified consultants and doctors and that. Be more than happy to see them if they're at the same level as, a, as my people. Be more than happy to submit to an assessment. That's not going to happen because they can't afford for it to happen. They can't pay these people. So by by consent to a degree, by consenting and going along, you might you're holding a gun to your own head. Fact. So I'm just having a look at my notes here. Uh, so we've got. So um, I'm just going to come on a little bit to. Um, I know we've all heard talk of. Uh, Mr. Sunak and, and his big plans. Well, I've just given you all the answers to all of it. I can't see him being able to take the sick note thing and giving it to nobody's. That's ridiculous. And you wouldn't be obliged to use those entities. But if they get awkward and say they do sanction you because you won't toe the line, then it's the standard route. Mandatory reconsideration, OK? They're probably not going to change their decision. So as soon as you get that paperwork back, mandatory reconsideration, straight into tribunal. And you would go into tribunal with, is it, you know, how can it be? Am I obliged to hand my professional medical health care over to the unqualified people. And the tribunal's going to have to say no. It's not. So I, I try not to worry if anybody does get a bit worried about what he's trying to bring in and all that. We've already got it covered. Because they're not going to use the right people to do it. So you've got the answers there. Um... When you're filling out forms, don't give them an inch. You know, there's questions like, oh, what are you like on good days? You don't have good days. You're grassing on yourself. Just like an interview with the police. So don't do it. Don't give them an inch. Anything you give them that they can knock back with, they will. Well, yeah, but you said couple of days a week, you're not too bad. Don't give them an inch. And don't forget, it. they're the criminals. <laughs> These people are the criminals, okay? Not you. They've deceived you from the off. So, uh, but as I say, copy everything down. Now, Kevin? Yeah? There's two next plans. Just aimed at people with anxiety, or is it all everybody on PIP? Well, he's trying to go after the. He's been warned about going after the mental health aspect, um, which encompasses a great many things, as you know. But again, is that these people they can't afford to bring doctors in that same report that it says about he wants to take the med uh, the sick note away from doctors. It also goes on to say that the NHS is about to lose 8,800 doctors. So there's going to be lots of vacancies. <laughs> so nobody's going to go and work for the DWP for 30 or 40 grand when that could be in the NHS on 70, 80, 90 plus. So it doesn't make any sense to me, but I, all his plans, if you know what to say, you won't have, to, there's no obligation for you to hand your medical, professional medical health care over to idiots. And if there is, if they say, well, you have to, then you need to see who's holding liability for the decisions. It's really simple. And, of course, nobody. This is why you can't even you, – you phone up. When you phone them up, they want to go through security and they want you to give you everything, including 
how, you know, how wide your arse is. But you ask them their name and you'll get a first name. That's because nobody's accepting liability. None of the paperwork signed. We don't have to go through that. So nobody's accepting any liability. Nobody's accepting liability. You do not have to comply. End of story. End of story. So, yeah, I would say, um, yeah, photocopy everything. Absolutely everything. I recently, now, I only did this because I know my way around the system, but I uh, recently did a three-hour assessment with PIP. And uh, quite frankly, it was exhausting. But I did it, but I did it to see what they were going to do because basically, you know, I'm not being big Eddie, but I'll get round it. I'll get round it and get it put right. But they didn't jerk with me. <laughs> not, not at all. So I was, uh, I was not lucky, really. You can't be lucky if all your, your medical info is absolutely spot on and true. It's not lucky. It's that's what you're going on. But so I went through it just to see what the result was. But I got a very good result. And um, I actually got a result inside two weeks as well, which I nearly fell over about. But there you have it. Um, another bit of info uh, on appeal. So if you put in for a mandatory reconsideration, you get that, and now you're going to apply a tribunal. Now, if you are lucky enough that you can take your tribunal paperwork to your nearest tribunal. I know that's not um, not everybody's in that boat. Is lucky. I'm I'm lucky enough. Whereas my my um, tribunal is five minutes away from here. But if you put in for once you get the mandatory reconsideration and you get your tribunal paperwork, if you can take that paperwork down to the tribunal personally and hand it in and ask them for a reference number there and then they should give you a reference number for your case now while you're waiting for tribunal you can claim the appeal rate of benefit okay you have to get that number from the Court and the quickest way to do it is go in there or get somebody to take it in there by hand. Again, they can be a bit awkward. Oh, I don't know what you're talking about, but just push them, pressure them, and sit around until they do sort it out. A lot of people will walk away when they go, Oh, no, no, we can't do that. Yeah, be a nuisance. Sit there till they do. Then you can claim the appeal rate. So you're not totally out of, a po out of pocket until you go to your appeal. So that's what I would say. Go along with it if you want. It's not mandatory. If you want to go through that and you get the right award, brilliant. But nine times out of ten, you won't get the correct award. They'll give you the absolute minimum they have to. So then we have to go around the uh, mandatory reconsideration. And what we also do with the mandatory reconsideration, we put a separate letter in freedom of information, asking um, certain questions, who's the assessor, what their uh, professional medical qualifications, um, have they got, um, I need to see a copy of their personal indemnity insurance, blah, blah, blah. And that tends to give it a little bit more of a kick when they're looking at their, or looking at their decision again. It's also funny the language they'll use. You'll ask them for a mandatory reconsideration of their decision. Now, if they change their minds, you'll get a bit of you'll get a letter from them, and it will say, "You asked us to look at your claim again." <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> I asked you to look at your decision, and this is how they snake out of things. No, you asked to look at your claim again, and we yeah. Yeah, we can award you more 
record. They won't ever tell you they've made a mistake. They'll never admit anything like that. Never, never, never. But there's, you know, there's some of your options there. Um, as I say, it, it's not rocket science. It really isn't rocket science for these people. So it is, it's really up to you how you want to go about it. I would suggest you fight them from the off, just with questions. Oh, thanks for your offer of an assessment. Can you just answer me this? And then you ask the, ask the questions to the agent. And then you go and ask the same questions to the DWP. You'll get two different answers. But ultimately, not mandatory. And we've had, I would say, probably about 10 people that picked that up and did what we told them, phoned up the DWP, and they had to push them a little bit. But ultimately, they were told, no, they're not mandatory. So if that's a fact, then you forget the assessments. Why, why would you subject yourself to that? They're going to screw with you big time. That's what they do. So it's not something I, I would suggest you fight them from the off because if they're going to be bastards, you can get into a tribunal three, four, five months quicker than you would if you go through the process. Then they knock you back. Then you've got to start the mandatory reconsideration process. And remember, it's 15 working days. That is their legislation. They will respond to a mandatory reconsideration in 15 working days. They don't. So you have to, you know, you give it the 15 days on day, 15 working days. On day 16, you get on the phone to them, what's going on? And you have to do that. Unfortunately, don't. Let it slip. Keep on it. But here's, you know, the reality is not mandatory, can't be mandatory because these people aren't qualified. They certainly can't override your medical evidence, your medical certificate, because they're not qualified to. So if you ask that in the first place, can, can these assessors? Well, the answer's got to be no, or it's a blatant lie which drops them in the shit even more. So, so it's very simple. You don't need a lot. You don't have to be ultra clever. Just a few points, as I've pointed out in here. Just having a look. Um, and the other thing is the telephone assessment situation. Well, a lot of people that I know um, have got musculoskeletal problems. How can you be assessed over the phone? How can anybody assess you over the phone with that sort of problem? It's ridiculous. And the fact is they can't. So you can shut that down. How, is, how can you see me down the phone, how it's affecting me? They can't. So don't consent for these pricks to assess you because they're not worth a shit. None of them. Um, let me just have a look. What else have I got here? Yeah, I think sort of the basics I've covered. You shouldn't need any more than what I've given you here to do anything, really. Obviously, we can assist in other areas if you've got some other problems. But, uh, yeah, all the, you know, this, this Rishi stuff, it's all, it already falls down. They might well be awkward and force you into a tribunal, but you're just going in with, you know, well, morning, sir. <laughs> is it a requirement, you know, I, I, that I hand my help? And if they're going to have to say, no, it's not a requirement. It can't be a requirement because they're not as qualified as your medical professionals. So it's an easy win. And it would not surprise me if that happens to be the case that you might get letters from HMCTS saying, oh, we're not going to give you a tribunal. We're going to ask the DWP to have another look at their decision. It's at that point that HMCTS are now failing in their duties. You could say, well, I want a hearing. I want a ruling on this. They're not going to like that. 
because if you think about it, the assessments thing is a huge cash cow for HMCTS. I think it's under uh, 250 quid per hearing. Now, how many hearings are going on, going on across the country every day just for DWP? Thousands. So we've had people going in, you know, for um, I'm coming. These people aren't qualified, blah, blah, blah. And them getting letters saying we're not going to give you a tribunal. We're going to go and speak to DWP. Well, it's at that point that you should be going, no, I insist. I want a ruling. But this is where they they don't want to rule on it. There's, there's going to it's a massive cash cow. One ruling will finish it. It's all you need, even in tribunal. Ruling is, no, you're not required to do that. That's it. Game over for the DWP and assessments. That's why they don't want to rule on it. Um, the other thing that's come up recently and um, is deductions from your benefits for debts, utilities, speeding fines, whatever. Now, I know we, I think we dropped it in the group. If not, it will get dropped in the group. But in, um, right, let me think. So that was 23, 20, 2021. Um, the High Court ruled that deductions from benefits, uh, basically without consent, is unlawful. So that was the ruling from the High Court. The DWP appealed it, and they lost that appeal last April, April 23. Um, we, I say we, this is the royal we, me and Graham, but um, had occasion um, to have to discuss this sort of thing with them recently. And um, <laughs> the girl said, uh, no, it's under appeal. So it's a complete lie. Now, you've got to understand that these people you're speaking to, they probably haven't got a clue. But somebody in the opposite, oh, it's under appeal, but it's not. The appeal was lost by the TWP. So that stands. So basically, it, it basically says, without them coming to you as the client, because nobody's asking you how them taking deductions is going to affect you, right? Nobody comes and asks you that. So that's where the consent needs to come in. But you don't have to consent, obviously. So what I'm suggesting now is if you are in that boat with deductions and you've asked them to reconsider or, you know, to stop taking deductions, blah, 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 and they won't, then you do a mandatory reconsideration, okay? Mandatory reconsideration of your uh, decision to take deductions, third, TPDs, third-party deductions, from my entitlements. Don't call them benefits either. They're entitlements. Um, yeah, mandatory reconsideration for that. They're probably going to say, no, we're not changing our mind. Now you go into tribunal and you go into tribunal, purely the high court ruling. All right. There it is. They can't deny it. They can't turn a, a, a bloke, a, a judge, if you want to call it that, a twat in um, tribunal, cannot sit there and go, oh, well, I'm not worried about the high court ruling. <laughs> it's just... So you'll shoot them down that way. And as I've said, the only thing we can't control is the DWP's actions. If they want to be bastards, they're going to be bastards and they're going to make life difficult. But that's when you dig your heels in. You know, that's what you've got to do. Don't give them an inch. All they want you to do is conform to their process so you give them consent to fuck you up. And that's exactly what you're doing. So I think anybody with deduction now, with any deductions now, ask them to reconsider, you know, a manage reconsideration decision to stop 
to take a certain amount of money and then straight into tribunal with the High Court ruling on deductions being unlawful, the jobs are good. Again, I've got a feeling they might not want you in there. So they might give it the old, oh, we'll have a little word instead. Because no, they're not going to want to rule on it. Because it will kill it. Absolutely kill it. So, and they're all in the same boat. They're all licking each other's asses and Christ knows what else. So that's where, you know, that is said. We know what the, the rules say. And, of course, they can then have to come back to you and say, oh, we need... You know, we want to pay this person, that person. No, I'm not giving you any consent. And basically, when you get an award, now I'm not sure about UC, and I think the wording's changed to a degree, but certainly on the ESA, I'm not sure about PIP, I really can't remember. But normally when you get an award, it says... The, the law says you need XXX to live on per week, okay? That's their word. The law says you need XXX. So if they take deductions that are putting you below what they've told you the law says you need to live on, then how's that right? Can't be right because they're putting you below what the law says. So this is, but they will drag this shit out. They will make it difficult. That's what they do. But as I say, you've just got to persevere. I say the appeal rate one's there. You may be lucky enough to be able to, you know, blag it through until you get to the appeal. But you will win. You will win. Absolutely, 100%. You will win it. This is why we try and keep, we try and get everybody to go in on the same grounds. If it's because you've been sanctioned or um, they've screwed you over over an assessment, then you go in with the, well, who are these people? They're not qualified. They, they can't override this. They can't do that. And they have to agree with you. So it's a win, but the DWP will try and make it so uncomfortable for you that, Unfortunately, some people just comply and then they still get shafted because you've, because you've shown them the middle finger. You know, it's almost like, oh, yeah, well, he's done everything we want, but we're still going to be arseholes. That's what you do. And don't forget, these people assessing you, you might as well walk into Tesco's, go up to the nearest till and ask the girl or the bloke on the till, could you give me a medical assessment, please? Or ask your cat. Your cat's just as qualified as these twats. Don't do it. Don't do it. Do not comply because <laughs> that's, the, that, that's the first pull of the trigger. <laughs> Excuse me. <coughs> oh, it must be time for a cigarette. Anyway. Uh, so there's, as I say, this this will go up in the public, but I've, you know, this isn't exhaustive, but you, I don't need to be exhaustive. We need to come back to basics. You, it's very, very simple. You're not refusing. You're asking questions. Questions I won't be able to answer, and you're not obliged to comply with. You're not obliged to give your health care away. This is why I think this little plan of his is just nonsense. And the only the, the one where he's going to take uh, the sick notes away from the doctors and, and, and move it in-house, you know, absolutely ridiculous. It, it won't work. But I think, logically, it's not going to be... They're not going to be able to come in and go, right, we're going to use a bunch of unqualified idiots and we're scrapping all the certificates we've already been given. And you've all got to start again. Not possible. So I think this is more than likely going to affect 
new claims more than anything. I mean, it's not even in yet. Not even in yet. But we've got the answers to it. I've just given them all to you in, in this video. There's Kevin, everything you uh, need there. Can I ask you something about, um, as you're coming to the end then and you, you're wrapping up here, we can, you can look at the questions in the group or we can help you read them if you've got some time, but is there any evidence, report, case law or references for um, the paper-based review as opposed to a, a telephone assessment is one yeah. question. Right, right. so um, w, uh, work capability assessment in the legislation on the WSA assessments, it says, I'll repeat it again, it says, uh, I can't remember the exact word at the beginning, but it basically says we'd like the client to do a initial assessment, but it is preferable and less stressful for the client for us to give them a paper-based review. Right? That's WCA, Work Capability. Pit. In the Gray's report, it sets out in there that it is your right. Not you can ask for one or it's preferable. It's your right to have a paper-based review. So you just mentioned Gray's report, and that's what it says, and that is what you require. And then that forces them out of using your but uh, that's going to be the DWP rather than the assessor firm, you know, Atos, Maximus, Capita. That's going to be the DWP that have probably got your medical records. But again, who's looking at them? What are their qualifications? That's what you need to be saying. Well, who looked at that? What were their medical qualifications to look at that? This is why your doctors shouldn't just be sending this stuff to the DWP. Your doctor should be doing that. So he's not doing his due diligence. So he's breaching data protection, GDPR, by just sending stuff and not questioning anything. And so, you've got a, you know, there's a you, right to getting, privacy as well. And yeah. You've got a right to privacy in various formats as well and, and endorsements in that. Uh, yeah. If you want to expand later. And that's like... A question then about, and then I've finished, and we can look at the room and uh, you can carry on. But uh, um, the the agencies that you've mentioned, uh, they was in there was uh, coverage in the public domain about them not being fit for purpose, the damage that they've caused, um, belligerence, we'll say uh, as sorts, yeah, deaths, suicides, etc. So they're coming to an end the contracts as well, aren't they? So it looks like the government would be in this uh, pre preliminary phase, um, gearing up to have a crossover to uh, get rid of these that are in contractual obligations. One would argue that they shouldn't be allowed to continue henceforth of uh, death, suicide, uh, not being fit for purpose. These are all yeah. things that have come out in the public domain. So, you know, there's, there's this aspect as well, isn't there, where there is proven yeah. evidence, there is complaint. Uh, obviously, a complaint, uh, death is bigger than a complaint, but we've got uh, we've got uh, what admissions from families, from doctors, from supporting legitimate agencies where there has been, in worst case scenarios, deaths and suicide. Uh, I'll hand it over to you. That's something else I wanted to uh, just just to make sure was covered in this chat. Yeah, no, that, I mean, that's why Graham and I um, initially, when we started seeing the people committing suicide over the treatment they were getting from these fucking morons. Sorry, I, I, no, I'm not apologising. Sorry, not apologising for swearing. I'm just telling you how it is, and my, my and Graham's and many others' personal experience, they are morons. So they're not fit for purpose because they're doing a job they're not qualified to do or a process they're not qualified to do. You don't have to consent to that. This is the problem. You go along with it. It's like I remember in the assessments what they do is um they would speak to you. they sort of you know you get there oh hello and blah 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 and then, are you happy to continue and as soon as you say yes that's your consent so we used to go well um hang on a minute what are your qualifications and you know can you do this can you can you override that can you diagnose can you prescribe well the people that i've been assessed by 
They don't like it. They get the hump. They get the proper hump. But you've got professional medical personnel assess, you know, have previously assessed you and given certificates out on the strength of that. And they want you to go and see a healthcare professional. Generally, a lot of them are nurses. Now, not even specialist nurses, because there are some specialist nurses that can prescribe. They can't diagnose and they can't automatically prescribe. They all go to the consultant and say, I'm Mr. Phillips here. I think um, we should try him on. So what do you think? And the consultant will say, yes, then the nurse can prescribe. But you can't diagnose. But you've already been seen by people that can diagnose. Professionals at consultant level, generally, or whatever your doctor might be, whatever your condition might be. So people assessing you have to be at the same level as those people or above. That's why they need your consent. So that once you've consented, they can basically do what they want. But as I said earlier, remember, it's not the assessor or the, you know, Atos, Maximus or uh, Capita. They're not pushing the sanction button. They're not stopping your money. The DWP do that on the report. Or sometimes they might get a report and it's not quite what they wanted. So they might fuck you over anyway. Which is outrageous. But that is what that is what they want in your consent for. Then you're in the process. You said yes and we did this and but it can all be corrected afterwards. But as I say, I would suggest you start the fight from the off and don't add five, six, seven months to your journey through torture. All the answers are there. So there we have it. I'm just having a quick look. I've covered I've covered most of it um, that you need. You don't require any more than this. But they will, and it's like tribunal. Um, I've been to one where I didn't fill a form in um, because I didn't need to. It was for WCA. So they sanctioned me because I didn't fill the form in. And when you go into tribunal, all they're interested in, you could put all the law and facts and everything in and go in with it. They won't be interested. All they'll say is, why didn't you fill the form in? They don't care that all the other stuff you've got solid. They just want to know why you didn't fill the form in. This is why we suggest to people that you all stand your ground on the same grounds. So when you go into tribunal, everybody's going in with the same thing. You know? not qualified is it a requirement that i hand my professional health care over to these people the answer is going to be no it isn't especially when nobody's accepting liability for the harm um, caused and, and i just want to, at this point as well i think we could um we could look at dedicating this to a, a lady that, that, that remembers somebody that passed away in hospital whilst being told oh. they was, uh, there was fit for work i think that would be um oh, oh yeah. yeah so yeah go on yeah, I would, um, dear a member, friend of ours, Carol, who uh, passed away in hospital. They found her fit for work, poor cow, but she, she ended up dying. Dave and I went up to her funeral in Scotland. Lovely soul. Um, so, yeah, I'd like, I, actually, that's not a bad, I would dedicate the memory of Carol just a fantastic lady who's badly treated and she was up for the fight unfortunately illness um, took her far too young but we still got all that ultimately sorted out for her her daughter we got all the money back etc etc just the shit they put her through you know she wasn't in the best of health anyway but they didn't help so Carol this one's for you much love to you. Yes, Maria, I hope you're listening. Nice. Well done. <laughs> well said, brother. Yeah, I've said all my pieces. I don't know if Graham or someone wants to pop up. 
um, or Joe Pup if he's still in. Um, brilliant, well done. That was that was uh, fucking excellent. Yeah, as I say, it's. I mean, I could make this a five-hour broadcast, but you don't. It would be superfluous to requirements. <laughs> you know, I've given you the facts. Please, once this goes up in the public, go and review it. Go and listen to what I've said. If you've missed any bits, everything you need is here, right in this video. And as I say, never refuse. Never refuse an assessment. Instant sanction. Straight away. Never refuse. Ask questions. They won't be able to answer and say, well, you know, I don't I don't think it'd be very wise of me at all to hand my medical health care over to these these people. So um, but I'd be more than happy to come to an assessment if you do you bring the rightly qualified consultants, doctors, etc. along? I'll be more than happy. Of course, they can't do that. Fact. That's why they want you to consent to doing it with idiots. So there you have it, people. As I say, I've tried to keep it short, but you don't need anything else here. Obviously, you may have a slightly different issue with them, which we're more than happy to have a listen to and 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 help where we can and, and maybe give you a few um, pointers, etc. More than happy to do that. But, I mean, we've covered everything here from assessments to the deductions nonsense that's going on. And they really are. They just, no, I mean, when, do you, when did anybody give them power of attorney to decide to take whatever they decide off of your benefits? The fact is, you haven't. But, of course, unless you know this stuff, you can't put it to them. But you've never done that, and they're unqualified, or, they, you know, they're not, they're not fit for purpose to do that because they're going to do it to your detriment. You don't have to consent to that. But don't refuse. Simple. So I hope, I hope it's been helpful. I'm just trying to have a look... Uh, I don't know if we've got anything in the in the group, questions, etc. But um, you can find, um, obviously, if you want to come across, we'd love to have you. Um, SPLSPro.com on the web. Um, we charge um, absolutely extortionate £12 a year donation to the trust and that gives you access to oh, just a wealth of information on every subject you can think of. I've got a um, DWP forum in there um, so you can ask questions in there. So it's basically a pound a month gives you access to all of that and more and um, also gives you access to our private chats. Um, so if you so feel inclined, please go and join up. That would be um, wonderful of you. We'd like to have you and uh, hope to see you there. Otherwise, it's the Facebook group. This group's going to run. Um, my idea is should we get some questions, two or three maybe decent questions, then I might put a post up and say, look, there's three or four, you know, three or four questions here I'm going to answer. But I'm not going to do it by text. So I'll come on and I'll do a live and I'll answer those specific questions. You can drop questions in here. All right. Anything you need to ask. And I shall do my level best. And with my with my cohort hiding there in the background, Mr. Graham, who's an absolute fucking star. Um, he's, uh, you know, we would do our best to help you out and as i say it's not a brag we've not failed yet the only failures that have been had is by people not doing what we told them to do that's the reality of it so you know please go and join up on the dot com and uh, as i say there's so much stuff in there you can see the whole 
the whole evolution of the DWP stuff, right from the conditional acceptance letters, you can see all the questions we ask. I do believe the freedom of information and the mandatory reconsideration documents are in there. So you can either download them or, or, or just use them as, as they are. If they just make sure they're um, valid for what your problem is. But generally, it, it, it's very straightforward. They're really to do with assessment. But they're in there. And, um, yeah, you know, anything else you need, you know where we are. Please come and ask and we'll do our, our best to get you sorted and get you some info in a timely fashion. So I hope you've all learnt something today. You should have, especially assessments are not mandatory. I mean, if that isn't the kick in the bollocks to finish all kicks in the bollocks, I don't know what is. So there we have it, people. I hope you've enjoyed it. And um, I can't, I'm just having a look. I can't really see the room. Oh, I see where I am. Right in there. Okay. Right. Has anybody got anything to say? Has anybody want, has got a question? Has anybody got an issue? Has anybody got a problem? You don't have to come on video, as you can see. <laughs> I'm just doing it all so you can see who I am. Most of you know who I am. A lot of you in here have... Um, I've spoken to and have been successful in your own rights, taking what we've said and running with it. And as I say, each to their own. But just remember, it's not mandatory. And I've told you why, because they're not qualified. And they can't override your stuff. But as I say, the agents will tell you it is mandatory and the DWP, with a little push in, will tell you it's not. But there's loads of people that can confirm what I've told you here tonight. So there we have it. Kevin. Hello. Hello. It's uh, Roger here, mate. Uh, Hello, mate. I, I could possibly help out with some people if they're having any trouble with water regarding the DWP. Uh, um, I can sort some templates out because the bottom line is if you put in a, what I tend to do with water is is making a ridiculous offer like five pound a month, and basically if you give if you make an offer, the court won't bother getting involved because because you've made an offer. Yeah, and especially what... if you stick it in writing, Raj. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. You put it in in writing, then you've made an offer. I've got a friend of mine at the moment. He's he's on ten pound a month for his yeah. water. At the moment, so they can't refuse. No, and no, you know, and if you're on benefits, it's going to put you into hardship. They'll accept the offer. Yeah, yeah. No, well said, Rog. I bear that in mind. If anybody heard that, you got any problems with the water and the, and the DWP, etc. Just got some ten baits. Um, you can find him in here. You can always tag him in here, and. Um, yeah, we'll get the info to you. Nice to see you, by the way, Roger. It's good to have you on board, mate. I, I will come on video, mate, but I'm not pretty. You're a good-looking guy. <laughs> Funny you should mention that. I was meant. I meant. I was going to say to everybody, um, please excuse my dishevelled appearance in the in the little promotional video I did. But today I'm much more shevelled. <laughs> I was I was wearing the tramp look and it was early in the morning and David said I'll oh, just do a little video and I thought oh I've got to go and put my makeup on and do my hair and that and then I thought nah bollocks I'll just do it as I am so that's why I look a bit tramp like but I'm a little bit tidier today people and I hope that anybody that's been disgruntled with DWP services may attain gruntled status from today's video. <laughs> I can a question for you. With the yeah. Of mandatory reconsideration, is there a time limit? There's no time limit on there, is there? If they've turned it down, 
you can uh, no you well can... it right so what they say is um they make a decision they say you've got um 30 days that's not true i got a mandatory a mandatory reconsideration after eight months um and also the court the courts will say stuff to you like like sorry the tribunal they're not courts the tribunal will say well you've only got so many uh, you know, you have to do it within 30 days of you receiving your mandatory reconsideration and blah, blah, blah. But the last time they did that to me, I wrote to them and I said, but until you until you give me a date for tribunal, there's no agreement between us. So I'm not bound to that. And they went, OK. <laughs> yeah, but I'm, I'm talking after tribunal, they made a the decision, refused it. They said you've got 30 months, but as far as I knew, as far as my way, you could, there is no time limit on that to reappear. No, there isn't. There isn't. You, and you can argue the toss. You can argue the toss anyway. You'll get stuff, you'll, you'll get it put in there. Forget all their 30 days and all that. It's all nonsense. It's absolute nonsense. But yeah, you know, first tier. I mean, the, the thing is, we've got to such a point now with the first tier tribunals, people are going in doing what we've said and we've had quite a few people getting the letter oh we're not we're not going to give you a tribunal we're gonna you know we're gonna ask the dwp well, well hang on a minute what's the point of us coming to you i want the tribunal but a lot of people and i don't you know each to their own but a lot of people will get the decision will still come round in their favor but for me that's not good enough i go no I want a ruling. Really put it on them. What if you and if they deny you a ruling or a, a hearing, then they're in trouble because they failed in their duty. So now you've got them on the hook. But there really isn't any time there. It's what they say in their paperwork. You can override that quite easily. And I have done so myself. So... Especially if you're moving up to second tier, they don't really want you up there, you see, because that's when you're starting to get um, in, into uh, court proper, which will really throw a span in the works for them. But fight them, fight them all the way and don't give them an inch <clears throat> is my suggestion. And uh, I don't, I, I'm going to look in the whole room to see who's in the room. Um, but I'm sure there's people in here that have followed our advice and and had results. Yeah, they might have put up a bit of a fight, but ultimately it's all come out in the wash in the uh, customer's favour. So that's why we we say we've still at 100 percent success rate. But the idea is we give you everything. You haven't. You know what to do. You know how to do it. You don't need to rely on anybody else. That was different at the beginning of this of our journey, but it's it's evolved massively since then. So it's purely one phone call, you know, or two phone calls. One to the assessor, ask a few questions, you know, or are you qualified? Who are they? Can I see their indemnity insurance? Can they override medical certificates? And then the same thing to the DWP. One of them will tell you, the, 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 the agent will probably tell you, yes, yes, we could do all of that. The DWP will go, no, no, they can't. So, but not mandatory. Remember that. They are not mandatory. So, really, that should be all you need. Because nobody can force you to hand your health care over to idiots. And you would be a fool to do so. So, really, just the one ground is is enough. But they'll probably put up a fight. But then we expect that. Thank you, Stephen. How are you, mate? Are you all right? Yes, I know. And I know it's dragged out. Like, I keep saying I'm going to ring you. It's just been mental, Steve. And I've... I've not been in the best place, mate. Um, mental health all over the place, and uh, but there's a lot going on in the in the background. 
uh, other staff were involved in um, or, or working our way through, should we say. But it's um, no, I, I could really do with a, a, a pint or 12 with you, Steve. You know, you know, how we're always uh, well behaved when it comes to drinking when we're out. Anyway, yes. Love to D. Well, Steve, mate, nice one. So I hope, and uh, yeah, um, yeah, I did notice Graham was in earlier, but um, Graham's Graham's a little dark horse, and we we go off and and we um, yeah, the devil's advocate everything, and we go through every scenario, we pull it apart, we go through every possible outcome, and then. We give out information, but um, absolute star. Graham's a friend of mine for bloody hell. Yeah, at least 40 years. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, he's brilliant. Um, but he just tends to take more of a... I'm not going to say backseat because that's not really correct. He's just... He, he, me, I, I'll come out and talk to anybody. I've got no problem with it. Graham likes to just sit back, take it all in, and then we just we dis we discuss opinions. But an absolute star, and as I say, it was Graham and I that threw ourselves under the bus first when we when we first came up with a conditional not not we came up with the conditional acceptance, uh, like like Mister Odonisia claims, fucking idiot. Um, so. Yeah, Graham's an absolute star. He just takes a, a yeah, slightly more backseat approach. Whereas I'm a tart and like to be in the limelight. <laughs> Social butterfly is what I would say. Social butterfly. <laughs> so, more like Social moth. <laughs> Brilliant. That's excellent. I think you could end it there. Then there's no questions in the group. You've got some input and support from from Roger and from um, Simon there. So, yeah, that's it. Well done, yeah. Excellent. No worries. As I say, it was no... You know, I could talk about all sorts of stuff, but it's really not relevant. Everything you need to deal with these, especially the 